Hey everybody, Skylar here. It's been a little while. I have had a hard time doing new series, planning them out, shooting them, editing them, etc. But, as I've recently moved and I'm kind of digging out my lock collection, I thought maybe just once a week I would sit down with one of my favorite locks and post it up here. So, welcome to the new potentially weekly series. I'll do my best. We're going to start out with what might be my favorite piece in the collection, and I want to forewarn you that not everything in this series is going to be as cool as this lock. Some of it might just be more sentimental, but there's going to be a lot of good stuff. Anyway, kicking it off, we have the Hall Safe Lock Patent. This is a very heavy lock to begin with, and uh, just beautiful and old. This is from the original Hall Patent from 1848, which was later reissued in 52 or 54 or something like that. And this is the lock that kicked off the traveling key or Lafayette lock style of locks. So, this is the key here, and it has a series of little pegs in it. And we slide that into the slot right above the handle here. It's going to be a little bit tricky to get this aligned, and I wonder if in production they were able to solve that. But there we go. And now, as we rotate the handle, the key is completely separate from us. Nothing is acting on the bolts yet, but the levers have been depressed now to their correct positions. And when the handle reaches about 180 degrees, it'll get pulled inward. And then you rotate all the way around, and your key pops out. All right, just going to unlock this real quick, so I want to show you a close-up as well. So, what also makes this very cool, you may have heard that I said in production and you can see the levers. Well, as rare and old and nice as this lock is, it's even a little more special because I'm very confident this is also a salesman sample. We can see the levers cut away here. We can see a tiny bit of paint, and I'm going to open this up so you can see exactly what's going on inside. Um, and it was, it was clearly made for demonstration purposes. Here, again, we have a close-up of what's going on. Here we have the key. You can also see that it's numbered. And the slot that the key will go into. This is the cutaway section, revealing the levers. Oh, and you can actually see that pin dropping out as the lever goes down. These aren't sprung at all, but you'll see that when we pull it apart. Anyway, here's the basic operation. So, the key is entered into this slot. Again, getting it aligned can be a little bit difficult. As it enters in, you'll see the levers take their position, and then you begin turning completely separated from the key, and at about 180 degrees, the bolt can slide in to the gap formed in the levers. Turn it all the way back around, and your key pop right out for you. All right, lock this up. Or, yeah, lock it, I guess. Perfect. So this was by William Hall of Brookline, Massachusetts. Again, patented 1848. Just a beast of a lock. Um, and let's pull it apart so I can show you how it works. All right, I'm gonna pull it apart. So, we'll keep our keys separate. Oh, also, this is kind of neat. This appears to be some sort of setup key where you can screw it in or out to make the shape of a different key. Pretty cool little add-on. All right, back to the lock itself. Get this aligned, and we'll just pull it apart. So, just four screws. Oh, and I should also say that this was produced for the Herring Safe Company. Their name is on the other side of it here. I'll try to put up a couple of photos of the close-ups of the names. And of course we have 22856 
on the handle here. Okay, but now for the moment of truth. Let's pop this puppy open. All right. So one of the first things that I want to point out is that here on each of the levers, <clears throat> that's a number one, that's two little dots, that's three little dots, four little dots, five little dots, and six little dots, all clearly handmade. Um, and clearly these are just to keep track of which levers go where, which again points to the salesman sample. You can see the beautiful red painted color here and underneath the levers. Um, all right, so the levers themselves, if I can tilt this, have the square opening with the slot through it. The slot obviously is where our bolt will pass into it, the post of the bolt. Have a look at a few of these. Pretty rough hewn, some of them. And they're all just on leaf springs, like so. They travel on this carriage, which can be unscrewed completely. And then this here, I believe just acts as a stop. Okay. The back of the lock, this is the handle rotating, and this is where the key enters into the lock. So, when we press our key in, you can see that it corresponds to these pins, which are not spring biased in and of themselves, <clears throat> but they ride along the levers, which are of course spring biased. And they're all pretty uniform, just long pins like so. This part is what drags. So this part here is what's going to drag on the bolt, pulling it back. And this acts as a stop to prevent it from doing that. All right, we're just going to carefully get the cover back on here without dropping any of the pins. Very nice. Okay, so let's Get the screws back in here. We're of course gonna test this to make sure that I didn't screw anything up while I was pulling everything apart. Um, that'd be pretty embarrassing. Hopefully I got it right. So you don't see a lot of this style of lock anymore where it actually takes the key and moves it away from your hand. But they were pretty popular back in the day. The Yale and Town Company, or at the very least, Linus Yale Sr. had one. He got his patent in the 50s. There are a number of other people. My, uh, my buddy Nigel tells me that nowadays they're called Lafayette Locks, and there are still some in production. And of course, many of you may have seen, and several of you may have even tweeted at me, the Forever Lock, the bike lock out of Asia that takes your key and draws it into the pins and then rotates everything cleanly. So... Everybody was asking for my opinion on that, and I said, you know, that's really cool, but those patents have been around for 150 years already. More than, I guess, 160, 165. And thus, everything old is new again. All right, we're back together. Let's just double check that I haven't screwed anything up. Gonna drop my key in, get everything aligned. There we go. Rotate the handle. And it draws in perfectly. Excellent. All right. My favorite lock. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you again next week. <laughs>